Hi, let's have a look at the SharePoint modified triggers in Power Automate. So my scenario here is I got a list called test list and here I got a column called project number. So what I would like to do here is when my first record get created under under the test list I don't have a project number so that means I don't need to trigger my flow whenever the project number is entered then I need to modify the flow uh, modify mo I need to trigger the flow and also the subsequent updates I don't want the flow to trigger as well so how can, how can we achieve that so let's build the flow now so here I'm going to select the SharePoint site and my list name is called test list. Right. Then we need to set the trigger condition only for the modified, but this trigger and this triggers or uh, triggers for the created and the modified one. So for that, we need to set the trigger under under the trigger condition. Okay, so how do you find the right syntax? So the easiest way to do that is go to the filter array, choose the value. In my case, it is the project number. And I can say is not equal to null. If I look the peak code, you will get my syntax then. Here we go. Not equals null. That's the one you need to take. Okay. Now we can delete this. So remember under, under the P code, all we need is highlight this. Copy that. Click done and delete. Now go to the settings. Trigger condition. Copy that. Remember, we don't need to put the single quotes for the null. Otherwise, it won't work. Here it is. Or you can use not empty also. There is another syntax as well. If you want to use, you can use also that. Okay, let's go with this now. And test this. So I'm going to set this. And then for the debugging purpose, I'm going to say project number. Uh, title hyphen project number okay demo item modified okay let's test this flow now right I'm going to create a record test one I'm not going to populate the project number okay so no project number is populated so that means my flow shouldn't trigger now let's have a look okay it's not triggered now let's go back and modify that record and populate a project number so prj 100 okay that's populated that means anytime my flow should trigger now so here it is my flow triggered let's go back and have a look the combos statement see you can see here the project number is populated okay so that's the way you can set the trigger conditions so remember under the settings you need to use not equal to the field name which is a trigger which that is coming from the previous step which is a trigger action field oh sorry the current action step which is a trigger field that is body of that trigger and the column name project number then null without any single quotes okay i'll put this under my under the description of the video okay now let's test another scenario for this 
I'm going to modify this now. So I'm going to modify this to project. Uh, sorry, I'm going to add some notes here. Save it. So what happens now then? Flow will trigger again. Let's see. Okay, here it is. The, my flow triggered again. See? But how can I stop this then? All I want is whenever the project number is ended, then only I want to trigger the flow. So what we could do here is, the workaround is we need a, another flag to protect this. Okay, so let's go and add another column then. So the column we want to add here called uh, is called um, project number ended. Yeah, and I'm going to make that as an S or S or no field. So the default value is going to be no then. And click OK that. Right, here it is, project number ended. Okay, so that's the field we ended, project number ended as yes or no, okay. So what we, what we want to do here is go back to the flow now. And do an update. So for that, I'm going to add an if condition also because I don't want to update all the time that. So the better way to do that is go and uh, add an if condition. Right, under the if condition, select the field name, which is project number ended is equal to uh, false. then add the update item okay now select the SharePoint then the list name which is the same list as this one that is the test list then the ID so ID is coming from my trigger Remember the when an item is created. It's the same list we are going to update it. So that's, a, that's ID we want. Title is mandatory, so you can map that from the trigger as well again. Then the project number, I'm going to update that to yes. Okay. Try to save this flow now. Let's see. Okay, flow saved successfully now. Right. Next, what we want is we want to extend that condition if the project number is no is not equal to yes then only we want to do the trigger so for that again we can use the same um, condition here add the compose and sorry add the filter And check that field. That field is called project number ended. Okay. Is equal to true. Look the peak code and no, it's not equal to. Okay. Look the peak code. Here it is, not equal to true. So just copy all that, click done. We can delete this now. Then go to the settings again of the trigger. See, we want to, we can extend this. So we, once we extend this, that means it's an and. So at not and this. So again, it's checking not is equal to the project number entered is true 
okay so let's check this okay I'm going to save the flow now okay flow saved successfully okay we got two runs so far that's fine go back to the SharePoint list right I'm going to add a um, new uh, test data now. I'm going to set test 2 here. Good stuff. Let's go back to my flow now and see the flow is triggered or not. I think we are good. The flow is not triggered. Okay. Let's go back and modify that record now so I'm going to modify this record to uh, set a project number so I'm going to say PRJ dash 200 okay I set the project number so I expect what should happen here is I'm going to refresh this page now the flow not triggered it let's see so go back to flow and check that okay the flow triggered let's go and have a look here it is that is true and it's updated the field as true also here so that means if I go back and refresh that page the test to I can see the project number and there is true now that's a tick box yep that's good news okay so let's go and enter uh, something else okay co 200 so I'm modifying modifying that same record okay here it is I modified that same record so I'm not expecting the flow to trigger again let's see now so I'm keep refreshing it I just want to make sure that is not triggered meantime what I could do is I'm going to add another record here called test 3 and save that and I'm going to populate the test 3 with a project number okay so hopefully flow should only trigger for the last one which is the project 3 one okay here it is two seconds ago that's the one and I can see that's project 3 one so that means you know it it populate with that project 300 value also see that so the create the create it didn't trigger triggered and also you can see the previous runs is not triggered for the for, for further modifications also so these are the techniques you can apply for uh, stopping the triggers uh, only for only for restricting a particular column when it is ended okay so let's have a look at that again so look at the settings look for the trigger conditions so you can add multiple trigger conditions here okay and also use the filter peak code to generate the condition you want hope this is useful and thank you for watching